Okay, we're just gonna toggle from one camera to the other and uh, so you can see and kind of compare between the Logitech and the bank. I'm celebrating World Watercolor Month with a new video every day in July. One question I get from a lot of artists, especially anyone who wants to teach online or build a course or just uh, do a better job of recording process videos, is how, how the heck am I set up here? Uh, I have good camera quality for the most part, but I'm not a filmmaking professional and I do this all myself. And I wanna show you some of the tools that I'm using uh, as well as try out a new uh, camera today. So uh, I'm just gonna give you a look at um, how I'm, I, I'm set up and uh, hopefully give you some ideas for how you can set up uh, to film without spending a ton of money. Uh, everything that I have has been slowly accumulated over many years <laughs> and um, certainly it's not all necessary. Uh, you can get a pretty decent setup for a uh, video for just a couple of hundred dollars. So, uh, and you know, until you're there, uh, we <laughs> Camera phones, uh, cameras on phones do a fantastic uh, job for getting started. Before we start though, I just wanna emphasize uh, that I'm gonna show you some tools today, but I really encourage you to use what you have when you're getting started. Once you've built a habit of recording video or taking photos of your work, um, then it's a lot uh, more likely that you're going to continue. Um, one thing you don't want to do is spend hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars and have the burden of now I need to make money to pay for all this equipment. Um, that's an oppressive feeling and it's going to make it actually uh, very easy to be par paralyzed by perfectionism, um, needing to get it right rather than just doing it. And so I really want to emphasize that. Use what you have. Um, invest slowly um, and within your means and it will be easier to build uh, a habit that feels uh, a video habit <laughs> that feels uh, like you can brand it your own way and uh, really make it your own i think about uh, that was i think the plus for me as a new instructor was i didn't have to justify a huge expense i just got to try to do things my way uh, without feeling like I needed to have all the answers to make this a success. And I really want to emphasize that. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what my supply, um, my setup looks like right now. First of all, we are I'm looking directly into <laughs> a webcam. Uh, this is just a Logitech and they make new models of their C920 or C925. They make new models of them all the time. So I have a couple of different models. Um, the one I'm looking into is my newer one. And uh, I also have this one up here, which is mounted on a boom that goes over my desk. And I will um, share a link to that in <laughs> the description below the video. You'll see links to all of the stuff that I have. So I run two webcams when I'm filming. And um, using a software, uh, OBS Studio, I'm able to toggle between those. So you can see um, my face and you can see my work surface. Uh, the boom that I have is relatively new. Uh, I have only had it for a little while. My husband had originally built me a mount that went on my ceiling. Um, which I liked, but the boom, I can move around anywhere into the room and be really precise in where I place it. Whereas something that's bolted to my ceiling, I was kind of locked in one place. So I've been using uh, the boom and I like that a lot more, except when I stub my toe on it. Um, so there's two webcams. OBS Studio lets me set up so that I can plug those cameras into my laptop and immediately start filming. And that's really, really helpful. Um, the Logitech cameras also come with a software called Logi, I think it's called. And um, it lets you have a little bit more control over the focus and zoom on your webcam. So that's been really helpful to have. Uh, and uh, then I also have a microphone. And I've used that little blue Yeti microphone. It's not that little. Um, I've used that microphone now for probably five years. It just sits on my desk. Um, it a lot of people like a headset mic or one that clips to your shirt. Um, I feel like I'm not good enough at having an awareness of the noise that stuff makes when it rubs against your hair or your clothes. Um, you really want to get that positioning right. 
And um, so that's why I've preferred the, the tabletop mic. I'm standing in one place um, so I can plug that mic in and really not have to think about it. And that is all um, managed through the OBS software. So I can uh, use, just plug it in and go. Um, OBS also has options for letting you live stream. So when I'm live streaming, there's very there's a little additional setup so that you can connect to the internet and so forth, but it's really um, quite minimal. And it's really nice to be able to just use the same software all the time so that you always have, um, you're always set up. Um, today I'm adding in something new. One thing that I do not do right now and I'd really like to do is I would like to um, also be able to film a little bit from the side so that when I'm painting um, maybe there's an angle that shows a little bit more of my palette um, or maybe even a little bit more of me leaning over my painting and working um, and just gives kind of a little bit more of an immersive experience. Anytime you're adding additional tools or pieces of the puzzle like that, it does mean that I have to uh, do more processing, do more editing. So I'm always a little bit hesitant. Is it going to be worthwhile for the amount of work that it is? And uh, so with this idea of bringing in a, a third camera, uh, how, how, how badly do I want to, to deal with the additional work that comes with that? We shall see. So I was sent this little bank bank idea cam. Uh, it's made especially particularly for live streaming and um, conference calls. So it is made to be a webcam that sits on my laptop. There's a little lens cap. So this is the camera itself and um, really cute. It, it's just a little round camera. One thing that I like about this is it is something that you could hold and move it around. So I'm really wondering how um, this might give me better options for getting close to some of the beautiful effects in my paintings. So that's one reason I'm really excited to try out this camera. And I just wanna thank Bank for sharing that with me. Ben Q, I don't know how to pronounce their name, but uh, <laughs> We're going to give it a try. Anyhow, this is a remote, so it gives me options for um, recording with this little camera um, without having to reach forward into my, my field of view. I can have this off to the side and um, do my recording from there. There's also a little magnifying lens, which I'm curious to try as well. I always think it's really interesting as a painter because I do... Um, you know, I do work with cameras differently than a lot of people do. Um, and so I have that combination of face-to-face uh, -face and tools. So we're going to set this up and give it a try. And uh, I'll share that with you in just a minute. Okay, I literally just plugged this in right now. This is the BenQ Idea Cam. I'm holding it in my hand. I have done no calibrating at all with it. Um, one thing I see is there's a little button on top that lets me activate a ring light. Not sure if that made me instantly more beautiful or not. Um, so let's just uh, take a look at how it works to move this little camera around. Um, while we're moving the camera around, you can see a little bit more of my setup, actually. There's the OBS. There's the webcam. There's my <laughs> microphone. Um, see how handy this little thing is? Um, I also want to point out, while we're here, the lights that I have set up. So first of all, I have these two lights, and I've pointed them kind of so that they bounce light off the ceiling um, so that I have a little bit of kind of a indirect glow in this space. One thing I don't want to have when I'm painting is a ton of shadows and I'm always fighting with my cameras wanting to really struggling with the contrast. So that's something that I have to think about. Um, but I also, so I have two of these there's the other one, two of these standing boom lights. They are cheaper than they look like. Um, just bought them on Amazon and they have LED lights so that um, the bulbs don't get really hot or anything like that. The other light I have, and I just want to show this to you, is this light from Canvas. It's got a really nice heavy base, which I like. And then the light itself is a ring light. It actually has a feature so that you can set uh, a phone right in here and put this right over top. It's really made for kind of the Instagram video kind of model. 
Um, there are a whole bunch of brightness settings. You can see the switch over here. Those brightness settings uh, give me lots of options, as does the kind of boom style of the arm here. So I tend to keep um, that on my work surface and, um, and adjust it based on what I'm looking for in terms of <laughs> kind of liking being able to hold a camera and just point at stuff. Um, what I like in terms of the quality of the light, how bright it should be. Uh, you can also adjust, I believe, the, the type of light, how warm or cool it is. So that can be really helpful if you're in a kind of fussy art studio space where your lighting is really not perfect, having a little light that you can put directly over your work surface and adjust the color temperature is really helpful. Um, while we're here, let's take a look at the boom as well. Um, <laughs> this is the view from the end. The webcam is mounted here. And then you can kind of see it comes across and out here and then um, sits on the floor. It's got three legs. So it's really heavy and stable. And um, I can actually put a, a heavier camera than this on it and lock it in place. Okay, we're just gonna toggle from one camera to the other. And uh, so you can see and kind of compare between the Logitech and the bank. So this is the bank here, the idea cam. And um, I like the warmth of the color, although I do feel like maybe the details could be a hair crisper. And then the Logitech, um, so this is the Logitech, and actually it got warmer for some reason as soon as I toggled it. It felt like it was really cool. <laughs> Hello. And now it's, um, I like the crispness of it. We're not done yet though. This is back to the Idea Cam by Ben Q. <laughs> Just gonna keep saying it in different ways. Um, this one is uh, just a little bit more softer um, and it's got the autofocus thing going, which I don't love. There we go, I've just tweaked the idea cam actually using the options in um, my OBS just to see what that would look like. I've got some options. Um, let's toggle back and look at how it looks on the Logitech. The color difference is the main thing. Uh, the color profile, which you can tweak. Um, there's options. I look a little greener in this in this one. I'm gonna try tweaking that again. Okay, so I don't think you'll be seeing me running three cameras anytime soon. For the last half hour, I've been moving the tripod to different areas. Um, it worked fine on the one corner, but then when I started painting with my left hand, you couldn't see anything anyhow. And um, then when I went to move it, I needed to change USB ports and that suddenly made my camera invisible to um, this software. So um, poking around didn't seem to help. Uh, I had to plug it back into the original USB port. And uh, as long as it's plugged into that port, it's not going to be taking video from that angle. So um, it's all a process. Learning how to structure and run <laughs> cameras for recording video. It's not easy, it's not for the faint of heart, and it's not for the people who aren't willing to Google um, problem sh troubleshooting uh, when inevitably your camera stops communicating with your software and so forth. So it's all just a learning experience. Um, I am really liking this little idea cam, and I actually think that what I'm going to be doing with it um, for my painting videos is I will be running my usual um, webcam for my talking head videos. That's this guy. And um, then when I need to um, get you in close so you can see the beauty of the watercolor, that's where this little guy is going to come in absolutely super handy. And so I can, and I'll need to adjust the focus on it, but I'll be able to get in real nice and close and say, look at that beautiful color. There it goes, focusing. And um, we'll have just a, a little bit of a more rapid way to quickly grab the camera right here and uh, use that to show you just how beautiful watercolor is. I like that idea. Generally what I find is whenever I add a piece of technology to my work setup, um, there's always a lot of time involved in figuring out the best way to use it and um, where to position it and uh, just how to work with it. One thing that I found with the webcams is that they have an autofocus feature and when you're painting on your work surface, 
they're wanting to zoom in and out on your hands. And when you take your hand away from the page, then they want to zoom in on the paper. And so uh, I had to learn how to fix the focus and set it so it was locked. Um, I've had to learn how to do a bunch of little things like that. And so I'm always kind of trying to tweak and do it better. Um, but it is just a process. And I also want to make it as easy as possible for me to edit these videos. And uh, because I'm a one man show, a one woman show, it's important to me to um, be able to create content that I can edit and get up on YouTube for you. So uh, you've gotten a look at my setup, uh, different things that have made it easier for me over the years. Um, one of those, the biggest thing I think is just having a setup I can rely on so that when I plug everything in, whether I'm live streaming or recording, I've got, you know, basically essentially the same setup and uh, that has helped a lot. Adding a, a new tool like this little idea cam, uh, it's always a lot of fun. Uh, and there's usually a way where I can use it to support my creative practice. Uh, it's just figuring out what it is. So um, because I'm happy with my talking head video, um, although uh, I think maybe for video conferencing, I might really like the, the remote, which we haven't even dove into yet. Um, but this ability to have something that doesn't have me reaching for my screen, um, that might be really handy. And I'll be looking into that a little bit more. But for now, um, I'm going to get a start with it, just using it to zoom in on some of those beautiful flows in watercolor. Uh, so I don't have to um, do all of that in post-processing, which is what I'm usually doing is zooming in within my video editing software. So we'll just see how it goes and uh, just learn as we go like I always have. Um, again, keep your budget uh, within your means. Uh, don't put pressure on yourself to pay for something expensive um, before you actually have uh, a habit uh, of creativity or creating content to support the, the products you're using. Uh, that's probably my best, uh, my most important tip for you. Uh, if you feel like you do get a little paralyzed by perfectionism, it's a good way to avoid it. Just a reminder that I am creating a video every day this month in July for World Watercolor Month. Uh, today we were focusing on some art business uh, conversation, but in uh, tomorrow's video we'll, we'll dive a little bit more into the watercolor painting practice and uh, just keep exploring um, the artist's life, really, uh, celebrating watercolor. When you post on social media this month, please use the hashtag World Watercolor Month. And if you're posting a video, uh, participating in the video challenge, uh, include the hashtag World Watercolor Month Video Challenge, and you can share those. Uh, when that hashtag is searched up on YouTube, you can see the whole menu of everyone who's posted for World Watercolor Month Video Challenge. And, uh, and go through and watch those videos. You, know, you have your whole, whole channel dedicated to watercolor and World Watercolor Month. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Angela Fair. Bye for now.